Martha Berlin P. Hetty Fry was born into relative poverty in Trinidad, but she did so well in school that she was offered a full scholarship to Oxford to study literature. But what she really wanted to study was medicine, so she turned the scholarship down. Coming up next, Dr. Hetty Fry, one of only a handful of Canadian politicians to defeat a sitting Prime Minister, talks about life beyond politics. Dr. Hetty Fry, thank you very much for being here today. It's delightful to have a chance to talk to you. It's my pleasure, Catherine. Now, you, uh, you were not born here in Canada. You were born in Trinidad. Yes, tiny little island. Tiny, mm -hmm. yeah. And you, um, you lived there, you grew up there. What was your childhood like? It was a great childhood. Uh, we were very poor. My dad was a tailor, my mom was, in those days you did a Pittman's course in typing and shorthand and um, so my mom started off life as a secretary. Uh, we lived in social housing for the longest time until I was about 12, 12, 12 13 years old. Um, and my dad just had one dream and that was to have uh, his own little shop where he could make clothes and be downtown and do his thing and, and, and that his daughter should get a good education and never ever have to do. Uh, the kinds of work that he and my mother did. And that was his, their major goal. And I was very close to my dad because I was an only child and uh, I could tell my father anything, ask him any question. He was a remarkable man, still is. Now, you were an only child. Um, did that, uh, I'm an only child too, I and I, and I yes. think a lot of times people think that you have a lonely childhood because you're an only child. I didn't, but d did you feel that you were a lonely child, or did that closeness to your parents uh, create a different unit? I, no, I wasn't a lonely child, but uh, parents, I was really close to my dad. Yeah. My mom was there, and she was kind and good to me, but my father and I were inseparable. And so I wasn't lonely at all, and I had lots of friends, but I read and read and read, probably. The, the biggest thing I could do was to delve into a book. It was my fantasy world. And sometimes my parents would come in because I would have a flashlight, and I'd be finishing up some book at one in the morning, and my parents would sort of come in and say, get to bed, go to sleep. So I was never lonely because for me, living in books and, and knowing about the world and, and making new friends, uh, uh, through books and then having enough children that I could play with. I used to play, we used to play street cricket a lot because it's Trinidad, you play sure. cricket. Yeah. And, uh, and so I, I really did have a very happy childhood and was very close to my dad. What Spent a you, lot of time with him. And what were you like as a child? Were you like him? I don't know if I was like him. I was me, I was mm. very uh, gregarious. Mm -hmm. Uh, but I was also very shy, which is kind of an oxymoron, but it was true, I was both of those things. Um, I, loved, uh, I loved drama and um, public speaking and all of those kinds of things. And I wasn't, very sp I wasn't a sports person at all. I wasn't good at organized sport or even individual sport. I sort of got to that later on in life. But no, I just had a great time. I had lots of friends. I loved dancing and I loved uh, just spending time on the beach and, and reading and doing all those kinds of things. Yeah. So you, um, you had a, a happy childhood, but were you aware that your parents also had very high expectations of you? I never felt that they had high expectations of me. It's very interesting. I never felt pressured mm. or pushed to do anything. My father just let me believe that I could do anything I wanted. And so it was what I wanted that was most important to him. He also told me that if I were a woman who could grow up and have um, a career or a profession of some kind, didn't matter what, that I would be able to do anything with my life. I wouldn't be uh, bound by any restrictions that, that life may place on me, that I could go anywhere and, and, and do my thing. And, and that actually worked for me because I realized when I eventually got, got divorced uh, that, that I, it, I could make my own living. I mm. could bring up my children. I didn't have to worry. And I always say that to young women. I always say, you don't have to get a profession, but really get a job, get a career, something that you love, so that you aren't always dependent on someone else, so that you can be independent and autonomous. How do you think your father became so progressive? Because he was probably 
uh, not alone, but one of a few who was encouraging a daughter to know that she could be anything she He uh, grew up with, uh, with his mother, who was a single mom in those days, single moms. She left her husband because he didn't want my, my father. Mm -hmm. And she said to him, I'm sorry, you, we come as a package. And she took, made it on her own, again, with no education at all. Uh, and she sort of brought him up and he was very close to her and she was a very, she was my role model. She was an extraordinarily feisty woman. Uh, she didn't let societal norms bother her. She brought up her son, she made a life, she had a little cafe where she sold sort of coffee and pastries that she made herself and that was how she earned a living. Um, and I grew up with her being so formidable and she was very involved in politics and so I used to go with her and in those days you traveled on a, on a big truck and you had these great big loudspeakers on the top of the truck and she would be sitting in the front of the truck speaking, you know, vote for so and so, he is going and I would be three years old and sitting with her and I became intrigued by the concept of politics and the fact that my grandmother could run people's campaigns and do those kinds of things. So I looked up to her um, and she had a great influence on my life. Probably that's one of the reasons why I wasn't as close to my mother as most girls would have been because my, I was close to my grandmother. Yeah. Because my father with a, a strong woman like his mother always felt, and maybe he looked at his mother's life and felt that I should learn some lessons from it, that if I had um, an education and I had a career or some sort of good sustainable job, that I would, like his mother, not have to struggle but be able to do what I wanted uh, and be able to, as he said, write your own ticket. And do you, um, do you still see her as one of the defining personal influences of your life now that you yourself are involved? Absolutely, yeah. absolutely. I always remember my grandmother used to say to me, if ever I complained about anything from the tiniest age, she'd say, stop complaining. If you don't like it, do something about it. Go on in there, roll up your sleeves and fix it. And she did, that was the way she did things. She was like a little battleship in full sail when she took off and was getting things done. So I had her as a strong influence. My father, of course, saw women as strong people and brought me up as a strong person. But when I, about 10 years ago, I was talking to my father about something and he said, you know, I need to tell you that the day you were born, I fell in love. He made me feel that way always, that I was the person who he felt was everything to him in his life. And so instead of growing up, as people say, you know, only children yes. are spoiled and get everything they yeah. want, I always felt that the most important thing I could do in life was to make my father proud. And whenever I sort of was about to stray, I would go, what would my my dad think if I ever did that. And interestingly enough, it isn't that I was afraid mm. that he would censure me or not love me anymore. I, I always knew that no matter what happened, he would love me and he would just go like, hey, that's a mistake. You yeah. made it. Move on. Move on. Let's yeah. go. Let's get moving on. So it wasn't that I was afraid. It was that I was empowered. And it was interesting how empowering your children um, also made them love you and want to prove to you that you were worth they were worthy of, of, the, of the trust. Is he still with you? Yes, he's 80, 88 this year. That's tremendous. 